The 2011 Multiplaying Half-Assed Gaming Awards are brought to you by Jason's upcoming self-help book, The Wild Card. My knowledge of sexual prowess can guarantee male orgasm. Everybody online, looking good. A companion podcast to the collaborative blog and gaming community that's playing as life allows, this is Multiplaying. Well, let's start the insanity. We have clearance, Clarence. Roger, Roger. What's our vector, Victor? Hello? Uh... Great heavens! What kind of radio show is this? And welcome back to Multiplaying, everybody. This isn't an episode number. This is the 2011 Multiplaying Half-Assed Gaming Awards. The Multis. This is why we do it. This is what we're here for. End of the year. It's 2011. You need to know what games to get for Christmas. Or you need some sort of justification to as to why spend you bought money. the games you already bought or to spend more money. <laughs> uh, or not. Um, so with us tonight, what are you drinking, Dean? Oh, you're you're gonna start with me, okay? I, you I said you had something special, so I, I, do, I have to I start have with you. I have something very special for you, and because the the multis or the multiplaying half s gaming awards are a very rare occasion, I have a rare drink, which I call the rare. Oh, I, I'm face palming in real. I'm face palming in real life right now. Please continue. It's uh, it's sparkling grape juice with a shot of Sunny D and a shot of Gatorade. That sounds oh. fucking delicious. Yes, and then I, I I also have a side <laughs> I have a side here of um, alcohol, and it's just a copper hook beer. Nice. All right. I suggest you try the rare though. It sounds fruity and delicious. <laughs> just like rare. <laughs> He's delicious. Yeah. Well, yeah. rare. What are you drinking tonight? I love how you don't even question the fruity part. Thanks, Steve. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> I am drinking one third of a rare. I have a uh, Gatorade. I, I'm I am not being fancy at all. I don't have anything interesting to drink whatsoever. But you're wearing a tux. I do totally actually have a T-shirt that has a tux on it right now. That's that is as fancy as this podcast is going to get. Well, there you go. Yeah. Come on, yeah. <laughs> John. Yes. What are you drinking, sir? I am drinking a sinister <laughs> red wine. Sinister red wine. Yeah, it's literally right. called Sinister Hand. That's awesome. I know. All right, Jason. Yeah, I am. Uh, I have Vanna White here next to me because it's a uh, classy night. She, <laughs> she's like she's, eighty years old though, right now. Yeah, I'm looking at her. <laughs> not, not so good looking up close. It's like Florence Henderson. Yeah, she keeps like looking at me like like she thinks she's hot. <laughs> hold on, hold on. Okay, I'm getting some vowels right now. I'm also getting some of those Heinekens that I still have from the last show because they're terrible. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and she no. handed me a W. I, I don't know. I don't know what to do with that. It's the wild card, man. Yeah. But you're, you have wow. a Heineken again? <laughs> hmm? You have a Heineken again? A Heineken and a W for and a W. And right, w. Go, go away. Go away. Go push some buttons. She has nowhere to go. <laughs> She's just wandering <laughs> the streets of Detroit right now. Did you find her when you guys were laying the linoleum in the computer? Yeah. <laughs> she, she won't leave. She will not leave. Oh, God. Uh, my... Good looking as she is not on TV. I'm just saying. <laughs> All right, uh, I I have uh, rum and ginger ale tonight. Captain's rum Cove, and ginger you, ale is that is not that rom, not in Romulan? It or something? I don't what? Twenty nine cents at the grocery store. That's, rum. That's like that's like a dollar for fifty six pack. No, it's Captain's <laughs> Captain Morgan's and ginger ale. That sounds really good, actually. Is there it's, a name yeah. for that drink? I've heard it called be uh, called Captain's. Cap, Captain's Cove. Yeah, mm. yeah, that's a really good drink. Tastes kind of like cream soda. Actually, yeah, that that drink is very, very good. I've I've had that many occasions. And it's in my awesome Atari Asteroids glass. So, yeah. All right, let's get these awards going, shall we? Uh, We, like last year, will start off with our more bullshit awards. These are the half-assed gaming awards. Uh, Starting off, best game of 2011 that you totally suck at. 
but you still love. We're going to start off with Jason. This is not a game that came out in 2011, but one that I think I I really gravitated towards this year and had a really renaissance. Not really where I say renaissance, because a lot of people like this game, but it seems just insanely popular this year, is League of Legends. Mm-hmm. I, I really got into that. I know, Steve, you got into that game earlier this year. It is a fantastic game. I totally love, but I I am totally comfortable with sucking at. Yep. Oh, I yeah, me to- too. Full agreement. But, John, you you say all, as well that you uh, that is the game that you suck at but totally but love. But you're and, good. But, yeah. You're but not, I'm not really. You're not the, like, top Maybe tier. Maybe compared to, like, top tier people. But I, Yeah, well, I'm not comparing good. myself to top tier people because there are games, many games in a row, where I would just get freaking stomped, like, people grinding their heel in my face, mm. you know? And uh, it, it happens, you know. Because but I think that's kind of the nature of that game, though, with everybody. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and and I have no problem with that. But I just like I go through streaks of where I will just suck and just just be yeah. terrible. And then Devin will remind me that I'm playing a champion that I'm terrible at. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think some of the most fun, most fun I've had in a multiplayer game this year was earlier in the year playing with you, where you you kind of played multiplayer games with me, where you were coaching me through different characters, and that. The the good thing about that game, it has so many just ridiculous characters and characters of different strategy that you can and you can play with friends and they can kind of coach you through stuff. And one of the things that I think that this game added this past year that really was a help was the AI matches. So mm-hmm. we could actually play with people and have them talk you through stuff. Yep. Yeah, yeah, that's that's probably my favorite thing. It's actually really funny because um uh, you know, you guys say like, you know, oh, you're not bad and stuff like that. And I always think, you know, like, oh God, I did so bad this this match or whatever. And and, and Devin uh, Tack will always be like, you're not bad. You just need to play heroes you're good at. You know, like Oriana. Every time you play Oriana, we win. But you never play her ever. <laughs> I don't understand. And I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> it's it's hard to explain. Like you play champions. It's fun to dick around in that game because there's just exactly. so many. There's so many. You can dig around yeah. With. You know, so and, then, fun and then champions. at the same time, well, yeah, it's, it's fun to uh, suck that game. Yeah, and then at the same time, he's awesome at brand, but never plays him. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. It's just like one of those things where you're like, when you're already, in a sense, when you've already mastered the kind of general mechanics of a champion, you almost don't want to play it anymore because you're like, oh, eh. exactly, yeah. You're like, eh. as soon as you start to know one character, you're like, oh, what other characters can I kind of know? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that does tend to happen. Yeah. Yeah, it's like as soon as you start learning, like, Rare, every time you played Cassidy for a long time, we would win games. But you would so rarely play him, ever. But you would just rape face with Cassidy. And I never understood. I was like, why don't you play Cassidy? And then Devin would be like, why don't you play Oriana? And I'm like, oh, wait. I see this now. <laughs> exactly. I, I, I've tried to break that streak. Like, if I do a rank game, I only play Tarek. It's all I play. Just tear, 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 and then that gets old. So then I go play with friends, and then I go play like you know Blitzcrank and do terrible. But it's hilarious. So who cares? <laughs> yeah. That's why that yeah. game's awesome. You can either be serious or just go dick around, and it's great. It's it's almost like you're playing a, a champion you're terrible at, and then when you pull something badass off, you're like, oh my god, that was so cool. But when you're already good at the champion, you're just like, yeah, that was normal. But yeah, as as a as a game that I genuinely suck at, but kind of like playing it's definitely up there um but in the same vein of strategy games uh my pick actually comes very recently as soon as this week uh i picked up shogun 2 oh this was my runner-up actually this is my (laughs) runner-up i picked up (laughs) shogun 2 for 10 bucks this week got it finally and it's quickly become uh i love the game but wow, am I horrible! It, that at is it. horribly complicated. Oh, my, it is so deep, and like the tutorial, the way the very soft-spoken tutorial throughout the game yeah. is just not like teaching me fast enough. Yeah. And it's just like, okay, come on. It, yeah, yeah. yeah the, how it tells you, like, okay, all you have to do is build three warrior units. You're like, okay, three warrior units. You queue it up and you hit end turn, and then your city blows up because you just got sieged. And you're like, yeah. what? 
<laughs> yeah, and it's like, okay, pick pick this form of flying tiger. This is one form. There are ten others, but whatever. <laughs> just, just focus on the one. This is what you're going to use yeah. for now. But this is what you, you're going to use for now, and we're not going to talk about you, the other ones. You but have fun getting your that. ass stomped in while you're digging around trying to figure out what the other ones do later on. Yeah. Um, and yeah. the, the funny one was I the first... Uh, my first campaign that I started this week, I picked one of the um, clans that was quote unquote easy, and like this at the first battle that I had, no problem. I got a jump on the guy. He only had a few units. I just destroyed him. I was like, okay, great. I, I love this game, <laughs> and uh, I took my units back and had them sit. And then all of a sudden, he brings the other half of his army or whatever <laughs> and, and attacks. It's like, okay, it looks somewhat even. He has a little bit of an upper hand, but I'll maybe my quote-unquote tactics that I learned from the tutorial will help yeah. out. No, right. <laughs> uh, just fucking got destroyed. But the funny part was is I got destroyed, and I have en- ended up just saying, okay, retreat. There's no way that I'm going to be able to win this, try to get out with as many guys as I can, get back to the main fort to get reinforcements my guy starts walking back to the fort gets about halfway there that's as many steps as i could still take in that turn then it switches over to the other uh other uh, clans turns and he immediately just chases my ass down and destroys me he's like oh man fuck you so i just started over but yeah that i'm horrible at it but it's i want to keep going back and playing it because it's just it's so cool i don't know uh but moving on uh dean Hi. What's your what's the game? So I'm gonna be super short with this because it's been like months and months and months since I played it. But um, as most of you know, I am fucking awful at FPSs, especially multiplayer ones. But um, the the game that I chose this year that I that I actually bought and totally suck at is Crisis Two. Mm-hmm. And you know, I, I didn't give it a, a very good chance. And I played quite a bit of of the first Crisis, and I really liked it because it was very sandboxy and. Um, you know, and let me kind of just, you know, go really slow and be kind of stealthy, like most mm-hmm. FPSs don't let you do. But with Crisis 2, I was just awful at it. You know how, like, you would encounter a situation and there would be, I don't know, like two or three different branching paths that you could take? Yeah. Well, I would take, like, the branching path and then do it the wrong way and just right. die. And then <laughs> die again and then die again. And so I kind of gave up probably about an hour and a half into it and so I, I i really need to give it some more time but i also need to accept the fact that i'm awful at fps's and i need to stop buying them so mm. like battle like i should have learned my lesson with battlefield 2 and playing with you guys and seeing you guys not die and i'm like i'm dead i'm dead how I'm do dead. you not die how do i how do i No, you are, that's why i can just see you asking us that how do you guys not die it's kind of how it works like i just <laughs> i don't it just i don't know they just i can't wrap my wrap my head around it but <clears throat> yeah my choice is crisis too i don't have a lot to say about it other than i, see, I suck see, at it. See, see dean what you need to do is you need to start cheating in crisis the way you cheat in skyrim i don't okay we're not getting into this buddy <laughs> let us move on <laughs> all right oh, rare God. rare what is your choice for a uh, sucky game it's a tie between uh, Orcs Must Die and Sanctum. And both. very similar games. Yes, very, exactly. very similar. I love tower defense games. I will buy almost any tower defense game known to man. I yeah. love dungeon defenders and crap like that. But for whatever reason, probably because it involves some sense of like you know shooter aspects, I am terrible at Orcs Must Die and Sanctum. Like I'll either be doing really well and then like forget to build a key tower. Or I'll have a whole bunch of really good towers, and then they'll all just kind of walk by them, and then I lose. (laughs) Moving on to our next category, uh, it is the game that you most regret purchasing in 2011, otherwise known as the Multiplaying 2011 Rubbers Award. (laughs) (laughs) They're bullshit. Because this is so (laughs) bullshit. Jason doesn't have one? What? You know what? I... I don't. I, I'm looking through all my purchases this year. I can't really think of one that like Those I. Receipts did wallet. you buy APB? No, that was last year. Yeah. No. Shit. We I, had fun in APB. <laughs> yeah, APB. I would like totally justify that one night was totally worth that money. <laughs> yeah. Um. 
I, I really can't think of one. I mean, I know what some of you guys said, and I, I had fun with these games. Um, I think, like, looking at this versus last year, I spent a lot more money on games last year than more than I did this year. Yeah, so did so I. So did I'm kind of, like, thinking I, I got a lot better this year of picking <laughs> games, and I can't really think of anything that I really disliked. I'm sorry. No, that's fine. <laughs> that's fine. You had a perfect year. I, w- I wore rubbers this year. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's uh, bullshit. Let's see, Dean, what does your rubber uh, award go to? So this this was actually kind of hard to, uh, to choose. <laughs> it was it was hard to choose because there were a couple games that I purchased, more than a couple games that I purchased that I was like, what the fuck? So um, I'm going to go with, uh, God... It's a toss up between Dungeon Siege 3 or Dragon Age 2. And I'm actually. Heresy. Sorry. Her- it's not. Well, it's. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to go with Dragon Age 2. Okay. Um, And, you know, I, I wasn't a huge fan of the first Dragon Age. I, I enjoyed the game. I thought it was very fun. I played it on the easiest setting because I liked it more as an action game than I did a turn based RPG. And so I kind of did the same with Dragon Age 2, but with. With that game, just the repetitive environments, the 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 whole game taking place in a single city and not feeling very epic like the first one did was kind of a, a real bummer. And that's not to say that the story wasn't good and that the romance options weren't better and that the you know the um the different character stories weren't good and stuff like that. But but really it was just a disappointment in the in in how epic it was and um and just repetitive environments. And so I was really even though I had fun with it, I was quite disappointed and was like, oh, "Why did I spend forty bucks on that it's, shit?" It's it's the game that you can definitely go, go back and say, "I you wish you wouldn't have spent the money on." Kind of, yeah. I, at least I, not full price. At least not full price. Yeah, yeah, it was. If you would have gotten it for five bucks, it'd be like sweet. Yeah. yeah. If it yeah if it was like if it was like twenty bucks, I probably would have been like, "Yeah, it's kind of a good deal." But you know, paying paying full price for that game was kind of like, oh. What did you do? You took everything that was good from the first one and kind of really twisted it. I don't know. Does anybody else feel the same way about that game? I, I not totally agree with you. Yeah, I feel you... certain. I feel certain same feelings about Dragon Age Two because they they very very much simplified the game uh, to the console like generation, if you might say, um, to where it's like the combat was like became a one button spam unless you actually physically went into the turn based version of it. And uh, and things and the repetitive thing is 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 uh, a little annoying, of course. But um, you know, Going the same damn cave like ten times in a row. You're like, wait well, a yeah. second. Well, same. yeah, it, it's like it wasn't even that like because a lot a lot of games a lot of games recycle the same area or the same t- same kind of dungeon, but but not to the point where you're running the exact same dungeon four or five times in a row. I also, I mean, Sorry, you can ahead. make the argument that lots of games do that. But this is a freaking Bioware game. Like, yeah. I expected more. I yeah. haven't even finished Dragon Age 2. I just put it down after finishing the second act and said, you know what, I'm just done. There's better stuff to play. I, I, I was legitimately disappointed with the game. I don't think it's a bad game, but I expected more. See, here's, here's the thing about, like, the whole um, because it's Bioware, I expected more kind of thing, is that the only thing I genuinely expect from Bioware is uh, a good story. I don't expect them to make great levels and things like that because I've never, I mean, you know, even in uh, even though previous games like KOTOR and all kinds of other things that they've done is is good are very very good games. I've never seen the level design be revolutionary or anything like that. So the only thing I look for in a Bioware game is the story, is the 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 choices and things like gotcha. that. Like, you know what I'm saying? So I think it, yeah. it, it probably compiles on the fact that <clears throat> the entire game is in one city, like Dean said. Like mm-hmm. where Mass Effect, yes. like things look similar environment wise, but you're moving around in a big that feels oh. open universe. Where well, yeah. So, feels so very what, they're able, what they're able to do with Mass Effect is even if they have the same dungeon, they put a different skin or different like architecture on it, and even if it is the same path, it, it feels totally feel, different. It doesn't, it doesn't feel like the same path because it's a different. It's a different area, but like you said in Dragon Age 2, it's all in the same place. So they can't just randomly change a dungeon to be like, oh, this one is filled with ice 
for no reason, you know, like, <laughs> they can't yeah, but I mean, it, so they it's, limited, they limited themselves by doing that kind of one city game. Yeah. But, but still like when you're, when you're going into completely different dungeons in the dungeon is, and I don't want to shit on dragon age two. Cause I really, <clears throat> I really did enjoy the game, but when you're going to the same dungeon and they're claiming it's a totally different cave. And the only thing different is that they unblocked a door or something like that. And it's literally the same layout and the same textures and the same graphics and the same enemies. It gets or sometimes, sometimes it's not even an unblocked door. Sometimes it's like, you know, just, just that you had um, one less door to go through. Yeah, and 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 that's what it was, and it was just it was very disappointing, and it just made me think, ah, oh, you know, I I had to pay full price for this thing, and this is kind of what I got when my expectation was, you know, more of the same from Dragon Age, uh, from from the first Dragon Age, when which was pretty freaking epic. Again, not to say that it's a bad game, but it was still kind of a disappointing purchase. All right, um, rare. I'll make mine really quick. I bought King Arthur, the role-playing war game or whatever. It was on sale on mm-hmm. Steam. I think I paid, I don't know, like eight bucks for it. I have maybe put 30 minutes into that game. That game sucks. <laughs> it's it's no. bad. All you right. know, actually, I, it, I've done the it, same thing, but uh, I think I got it for like... It to be Shogun 2, but it's not user-friendly, and it's not fun. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, I, actually, I do have that game, and I had bought it like once upon a time for like two dollars during a Black Friday thing, and I was like, oh, two fifty. I was like, hell yeah, who cares if it sucks? And I was like, wow, this sucks so bad, it's not worth two fifty. Yeah, this is worse than uh, Candy Lynch two. <laughs> yeah, Candy Lynch two. It was worth the two dollars fifty cents that I paid for it, even though it was like a three hour long game, or what was it? Two hours long? I don't know, like five. Damn longer boy. than longer than eight minutes. Hmm. <laughs> You would know with your new book. Mm. <laughs> uh, John and mines mimic each other, and I don't think we really have to spend a lot of time on it because we've kind of we've brought it up in p- previous podcasts before. Yes. Uh, Brink. Um, Very shortly. <laughs> yeah, I was just. It's not, it's not that bad. It's not a horrible game. No, but it was not. for me a monstrous letdown. Yeah. Because I from, every from what time they proposed it was gonna be from what they proposed and from what, the way the game looked and to have it come out and be as broken as it was I couldn't play that game for a couple months. Yeah, that's true. That sucks. Yeah. And I still yeah. even when I st- even this is the this is how disappointing it is to me or this is why it's so disappointing to me is that I couldn't play it for a couple months and even during that time when people were like, man, this game is. That game screwed because it they came, it came out broken. It's going to be horrible. It's never going to live up. Blah, blah blah. I ignored it all. I just said whatever. I'll just see. It very well could be a bad game. I don't know. I'll see how it is when they fix it. I kept checking. I kept checking, and then miraculously one day I went back and it's working great. And by then you don't care. Just it wasn't. It just wasn't fun. Uh, next category is best game that you wanted to be able to experience fresh all over again. Uh, I think we basically are down to like three selections, and we'll start off with Dean and Rares. Yeah. Kendall. You want, you want me to go? All right. Yeah. It's Skyrim. That's all that needs to be said. That it's game is the, amazing. It's when the sky sits on your face, right? Yeah. Yeah. Or you're just like up in the clouds. And then you yeah. play the game, and you're like, "Oh, I want to be up in the clouds again, please, one more time." That's this is amazing. <laughs> <laughs> so, did you guys did you guys finish the story? Is that what happened? No, no. It was just so awesome. I want to play it fresh again. I, I have to admit some agreement with that because of uh, like what me and Dean talked about in the last podcast, especially uh, just some of the experiences, some of the places that you see the first time that you see it is just so. Uh, Banging, like, jo- jaw dropping. That's the word I was looking for. Breathtaking. Uh, yeah, breathtaking. There you go. It's it, it's the kind of game that you get twenty hours into, and you my like in, in my mind at least, I was literally thinking like, how the fuck did they make this thing? Yep. Of course, that that veil kind of goes down a little bit as you play more and more of it, but still, it's it's insanity, and it is a great game. And I agree with Rare. I would love to experience that all over again for the beginning. I can't say I played any other games for 30 hours and have still had those experiences pop up. 
definitely. Like that, let alone so. fifty or two hundred. Right. Well, I'm not yeah. that far, but <laughs> I, I know you're not. I'm just saying it's going to be right. possible. It's still yeah. going to yeah. happen. Yeah. Totally. The only reason I I can say that I did not choose Skyrim is because I'm not that far into the game. There you so go. So I'm still fresh. So I but can't say your, that I want it fresh again. But what's your game, John? Portal Two. Um, simply because, um, and and I mean that in the sense of uh, like Portal One was so different when it was out. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. It was like, it was a physics puzzle game with portals and, you know, just use all these crazy tactics and things like that. And when Portal 2 came out, it was like more of the same, but better and more complex and things like that. When I played Portal 2, and I still haven't actually finished Portal 2 now. What? What? Really? Holy shit. Get the fuck off this podcast. Yeah, totally. Just leave. Get off my planet. (laughs) (laughs) I don't want to live in this world. (laughs) Dude. I think I've got like a few levels, maybe more to go. I don't know, but um, but in a sense, like I I would like to experience the portal experience from the beginning. No, I I, mean, I like totally fresh. agree with you. Like you know, like not so much as it, it's the same kind of thing as Skyrim, where it's like the first time you find that big dungeon that rare uh, that Steve was talking about, like that one that was so big it could be a game on its own. Mm-hmm. You know, like I feel like certain levels of portal could be just be like yeah. i could spend hours doing it all over again and be like oh my god i figured it out this is amazing but then once you figure it out you play it again and you're like oh okay yeah you know like i can do this again and again and again and it becomes something more instead of the discovery of how I'm, how to do it it just becomes how quickly can i do it which is not you know and that's why i have no, to say near portal is enthralling right Right. Um, all right. Well, Jason and uh, me are sharing one. What is it, Jason? Saints Row, the third. Yep, the third. <laughs> and like John, I have not beaten it, but I have. So yeah, I, but I, I, I can't I, tell playing it. I totally want to re-experience this again. And you know what? I even uh, I what I meant to mention on last week's show, and I failed to was I did start the game over again as a woman. As a zombie, uh, right? No. Uh, <laughs> well, I fir- what was funny is that at first I started, I, I had created a female character and I used the zombie, fo- zombie voice. Even if you don't intend on playing it, I, I highly suggest going into the character creator and making a woman and just keep selecting the zombie voice to see a woman use that voice. It's fucking hilarious. But anyways, I went back and tried to play it again as a woman. I played through like the first couple missions, and it just didn't feel the same. Uh, it just somewhat felt awkward because. It was but is awkward. it because you have that whole experience as one character? I think that's pr- primarily it. And I mean, those set pieces are so memorable yes. that I can I can kind of see. It's one time, and when you go do it, it's like dim- diminishing returns. Yes, it definitely. That's I think that's the primary reason why. But then there's also like a little bit of a problem with uh, some of the things that are not so much the things that are said, but some of the actions taken by the character as a woman. It just really didn't feel the same, like right, yes. I guess. Yeah. Um, but it's hard to explain without like getting deeper into it. But we'll we'll not do that. But yes, the missions and the story, the that game, oh my god, oh. Yeah. I I don't I I envy you so much because you're not done with it. Yeah. Can I ask and you a quick question about it? What? Can you um do co-op on like split screen on like an Xbox? I have no idea. It's a good question. We played PC. We played co-op, and I can say uh, co-op on PC. It works really really well. Yes, has tons of fun. Okay, because I'm buying it for my brother. That's why I haven't bought it for myself yet. But I don't know if I should get it for Xbox. How old's your, how old's your brother again? He's 16 now. Is he ready for giant purple dildos? I don't know. He's in high Who school. He's in high school. He's really so he, he knows all about it. <laughs> He'll be fine. All right. He's made him in wood shop. Oh, okay. That's normal. <laughs> oh, uh, I, what I asked you, Steve? Did you yeah. have that one cut scene where Pierce? Rubs the uh, p- purple dildo behind his head. Yes. Like, <laughs> he yes. Turns around like, come on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. That game is so fucking funny. Yeah. Like, it's that's, it's just the little shit they do is awesome. The one, uh, yeah, 
the I was going to bring up this point later, but since this is a good segue to the point that I wanted to bring up, uh, it used to, over the last I don't know four or five years, whenever somebody brings up something about a game that's funny, they typically refer to Telltale. Yeah, for this, this the, blow, this side of the water. yeah, th- th- that's always kind of been the idea of what a funny game is. But I am so you glad you fight that, like a dairy farmer. Yeah, but I'm so glad that this game came along to show you that the, you can do a different kind of funny and do it well. Yeah. And I'm I'm so happy that this exists. Just just how natural it does yes. it. That's yeah. that's the best part of this game. That's the charm of this game. Yeah, I I cannot wait for another installment. So, I want to play this so bad. You need to play this so bad, Dean. Uh, but, we'll, on sale. but we'll move on to our next category. Uh, the last category before we get into our for real episode. Oh, no. Oh, we have two more. I'm sorry. Uh, second to last. Most bang for your buck game. What is the game that you feel you bought this year that you're going to continue to pour hours into and you feel like you got every penny and more out of? So, uh, John and Rare... It's pretty obvious for Rare. I'm actually kind of surprised with John, but what's up? What is well, it? Let's let John take it. Uh, I mean, yeah, like, it's it's almost obvious for Rare, just to say EVE online. Um, but I have, um, I would say almost just in the last maybe, like, three months, poured more hours into EVE online than probably all of my gaming combined for, like, the rest of the year, it feels like. Um, probably just in the last like maybe four four months or five months max, I've poured more hours than every other game put together into Eve, wow. and um, it, it it's it's really hard to kind of just say this is why I'm doing it. It's more has to do with just the environment, the immersion of of what you can can do, or really just the lack of limits of what you can do. It's kind of like you're just like living in that world. Yeah, yeah. I, I've really it. It's it's like the hooks have gotten into me, in the sense of like, I've realized why I I love this kind of sandbox so much, and um and when you're talking about games like uh just any any kind of sandboxy RPG, whether it's Fallout or Elder Scrolls series or whatever, you know, you put so many hours into it because. They give you a lot of shit to do. Uh, in a sense, Eve, there's no end to the shit you can do in that game. That You can create your own metagame. I mean, one that doesn't exist, and then if it catches on, then it becomes a whole different beast, of course. But, you know, it's just... I, I, I don't even know how to explain how Eve has captured me recently. And, Maybe and I can, can't try and, and put it in perspective. Yeah, and I'm almost... Uh, genuinely almost worried about my views on when I start to play uh, Star Wars Old Republic uh, because uh, of of the way Eve has almost changed changed the way I look at at online games as a whole not just you know because I'm going to enjoy Old Republic obviously for what it is but just online games as a whole I'm almost worried that it'll shorten my 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 lifespan in Old Republic mm-hmm. right so rare. What did you want to say about it? Uh, just like when he was describing the whole how Eve really gets your hooks into you. Like you know, you guys know I was really into Global Agenda, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And oh, I in remember total, I've played about 230 hours of Global Agenda. Mm-hmm. To put things in perspective, I've logged ten times as much play into Eve as I have Global Agenda. I've played Jesus. over 2,100 hours of this game. That's like three months of your yeah. waking life. I am dude. well aware You have of completely that. flunked out of college. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, my life is over. Because... But it's okay because he's a billionaire in the game. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> you don't even pay wow. for the game anymore, do you? You just buy Plex. I actually yeah, well, I, that... I did pay for this last one just because I didn't buy a Plex in time and I forgot <laughs> to cancel the you know resub, but yeah. Yeah, this game's awesome. All right. Well, speaking of addicting, uh, Dean. Skyrim is my bang for the buck. I've put 106 hours into that game because I'm Jeez. crazy. Yeah, I know. That's what I said. I haven't even beat the main quest. My plan is to beat the main quest this weekend and then create a conjurer, like a super evil conjurer that raises the dead and then makes the 
dead, like kill other dead. I don't know. Anyway, I'm a super nice conjurer. So, really? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm. I'm. A, he only I'm raises a... nice people. Well, I only. I. I, <laughs> I summon the uh, flame and the the anti. Uh, oh, the Atronarchs. Atronarchs or, or whatever. Whatever. Yeah. Blah, 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 blah. See, I I want to raise the dead. So like, I want to be like, I hate you, and so I'm gonna raise you up and then make you kill people I hate. Because then yeah. that that just sounds fun to me. But the the bang for the buck of 2011 for me is has got to be Skyrim. The game is absolutely amazing. I put in yeah. Over 100 hours, and I'm going to keep on playing. It's like my it's my MMO, you know? Yeah, I have to agree. Yeah. Uh, that was mine as well. Uh, 36 in, I believe. And mm-hmm. I'm actually, I said the, like to myself this the other day, I'm going to probably take a break from it because of uh, the Old Republic coming. But I, it's going to be my most bang for the buck because I know I'm going to keep going back to it. It's a good idea. Yeah. Yep. Uh, and moving on to Jason. Yeah, when I look at this category i totally agree skyrim should be when you pay for a game that's like uh what you should get most out of but when i look at this category best bang for your buck it's got to be saints row (laughs) (laughs) how ridiculous the stuff is like blockbuster set piece stuff is i i have i don't think i i'm trying to look back on games i have had more fun in this game just the wild shit that has happened that it is like, okay, that is like a ridiculous blockbuster game bang for my buck. I don't know. <laughs> can't put it this in words. Most, just, I can't. Just be, just, for your buck. Just, it has, it has, what, what you're saying is, what you're saying is it has the most J.J. Abrams in it. Exactly. <laughs> Whereas, Michael, Michael or, Bay... Everything. The most Michael Bay, the most J.J. Abrams, the most... All that stuff. Yeah. yeah, All that awesome. Saints Row the Third, it's like finding Vanna White in your basement. <laughs> Go on. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's go next to best game that you never finished in 2011. Uh, Jason, do you just want to continue? Yeah, I haven't been... <laughs> <laughs> he has not finished. He has not finished with the explosions yet. Because I do not want to finish it. I, <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I wish continue, I was in your shoes. He's going to yeah. continue making new characters and just replaying the blockbuster Michael Bayness. Yeah. Uh, and uh, and also kind of continuing from the last category, mine is Skyrim as well. I have not beaten even the main quest in that, uh, and neither has John. No, no, no. I um, I'm about maybe around the same amount of hours, like maybe forty hours into the game. Okay. And uh, I've only done uh two guilds, and I'm I have no idea how far I'm in into the thieves guild, but um, I've done zero story, zero. But uh, but yeah, yeah. I'm not gonna finish that game for a very long time. But I freaking no. it. Love that and game, I, and I, I kind of have to agree with uh, Rare's comment that he made on the uh, the doc here that none of us will ever finish Skyrim. So it actually might be a moot point. So Rare, what is your uh, favorite game that you did not finish? Because of that, I mean, it it would be Skyrim, but just putting that aside as a sort of acknowledgement that none of us will ever finish it. Um, yeah. Saints Row. <laughs> See, no, <laughs> honestly, I really, really want to play that game. Like I'm mad at myself that i don't own it right now but i'm saving it for when i can play it with my brother but uh current game that i really like but i haven't finished is uh heroes of might magic 6 mm-hmm. you can't technically oh finish i do want to play that because it's a you know it's so good strategy it's game, but game. the campaign i haven't finished it yet and i am such a fanboy of the series i know i've said this a billion times but i absolutely love that game it's amazing and that's why i'm afraid to play it because i'll sit down and I'll pop up in a campaign. I'll be like, okay, I'll just do a couple turns. And then, like, <laughs> ten hours later, oh, <laughs> I should probably go to bed. <laughs> I but wait, love it's that 30, game. 30 in the morning, and I am already late for class. Yeah, oh, like, I, I am the <laughs> ultimate one more turner when it comes to Heroes of My Magic. I can't stop until I've beaten the map. That's why I'm afraid oh. to play that game. Yeah, I love it that much. I'm the same way. I'm the same way. Like when I when I did the uh, the first faction, I forget which one it was already now. But every time I was like, all right, I'm just gonna play like you know, 
like uh, 10 turns, let's say. And I was like, oh, okay, cool. And then I was like, oh, but if I just go two more turns, I'll have this. And then I could just finish. I'm like, wait, no, that didn't work out. Okay, five more turns and I'll be done. You know, it's just like, and it keeps going and going and going. Or you just like, for whatever reason, decide instead of pushing forward in the map, I'm going to garrison up and just farm units for like two weeks, which is like <laughs> a half an hour. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that and that of course never works out because the rest of the world garrisons up too. So then it's yeah, just totally yeah. unproductive. But that game's just awesome. It's really good. I highly recommend it. All right, Dean. Hey, this what your your response kind of makes me curious. What's yours? Yeah, so my uh, best game that I never finished in 2011 is Dead Island. I'm a huge friggin' zombie fan, and watching Rare's uh, video review of that game totally. Like I, I had I have like a media PC set up, and um, after we got done with the podcast, I was like, okay, I got I gotta watch this thing that he did. I I have to see it, and so I put it on my forty two inch screen. I put it in like the seven twenty p or whatever the HD was for YouTube, and I'm like, <laughs> Jesus Christ, I need this zombie game. And so I bought it, and I wasn't expecting a whole lot because people said it was Borderlands with melee weapons and zombies. Well, I was pleasantly surprised. There's tons of quests. It's an amazing. It's an amazingly fun game, and it, and it's fun multiplayer. And I haven't put the amount of time that I really want to put into that game. Um, and, but but really, it's got to be for 2011 the best game that I've I've never finished because there's no reason that I stopped playing it. Well, there are a couple of reasons, but there's no good reason that I stopped yeah. playing Dead it's Island. Just other it, stuff came out to distract you. Yeah, it's still right. a great game. Exactly, I got distracted, but the game is fantastic and it's super fun. And I only got to the second area, and I know there are a whole lot more beyond this. And it just makes me very excited to be able to go back and experience that because it's it's scary, it's fun, it's deep in some and it, ways. And it came out of nowhere. I think that's yeah. the big thing. Yeah, yeah. It that kinda, co-op was so much fun. Yeah, yeah, and 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 I I'm not a huge fan of Borderlands. I don't know what it is about Borderlands, but I just didn't like it. But Dead I Island, neither. Yeah, Dead Island totally just like hit this like sort of nerdy Dean loves zombies nerve with me and <laughs> yeah. and just smacking people in the face with a paddle is just fun. <laughs> sounds like so. a sounds like a band name, Do Dean <laughs> loves zombies. <laughs> so yeah, that's 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 my game. That's All right. a good option, good choice. Are you ready? I'm ready. All right. Oh. Five, four, three, two, one, do it! Oh. Oh. The These are now our for real 2011 multis categories. Uh, multis. Uh, starting off the 2011 multis with the best handheld game of 2011. Uh, I'm going to kind of bow out of this. I'm not a big handheld guy, as everybody already knows. I put down Angry Birds. You're lame. I dude. think that's what yeah. all the kids are playing these days, right? Yeah. yeah. And, and I, I and I had game dev story before I was like, Ooh. wait, that came out like years ago, didn't it? <laughs> 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 yeah. No. So I'm I'm uh, I'm to- I'm totally. Uh, I don't think me and John are part of this. So Jason, what no, was yours? No. Well, apparently, Atari Lynx games are ruled out of this category. So no, I'll throw them in. It's okay. Throw them in. Yeah, no, no, really? that's fine. Just go ahead and do it. That's yeah. than California Games, Atari Lynx. <laughs> well, well, maybe we'll get on the follow-up to California Games, the box cover for the there quote. You go. Yeah, there you so go. That's, that's my winner. <laughs> yeah. No, but for real. Mario Land 3D. 3DS was really, really good. Was have it? you beat cool. that? I have not beat it. I'm in, like, the last world. Okay. But it is a great game, and I will say the one thing that I'm really impressed with that game is my son, who is seven, is mm-hmm. playing it, and he loves it. Really? And to see him play it and really get good at navigating stuff and watching him play has been a real treat. That's like, cool. Not, not to get sappy, but to see him play like a game and really get into it and really have the hand-eye coordination, and I'm watching him do a lot of cool stuff. Yeah, I and and to be able to see him enjoy a game that you probably enjoyed as a child yes. as well. Yep. Yeah. So can I ask a very quick question? I hate to drag out Mario Land and all that stuff, but a very quick question: What's your? How would you um, compare this to previous titles in the series? What is it most close to? I guess it, it does a lot of homages to. Uh, there's like old 2D homages. There's it's kind of 
I guess, a mix between Super Mario Galaxy, uh, Mario 64. Probably oh, the best. I want to go buy that so so bad now. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, awesome. Okay, well, thank you. Dean. Hey, hi. What's yeah. yours? Uh, my best handheld game, I'm going to have to go with Grand Prix Story. Um, I bought it for Android because I was like, I kind of like racing and I kind of like game dev story and uh, it takes game dev story and it uh, puts it up a notch into Grand Prix story where it's, um, you know, a, kind of a micromanagement strategy game, except with racing. Um, and you actually get to race cars around a track and you actually get to watch them um, as they race around a race around the track, which kind of gives you another level of connectedness with your, you know, little fake cars or whatever it is. Uh, and it's super addictive, just like Game Story was. And I, I think I probably played that the first time I played that. I think I played it for like four or five hours straight on my phone. Killed the battery, but um, it it remained fun until I beat the shit out of that game. I plan on playing it again, and I think it was probably the best handheld game I played in 2011. That was awesome. I'm gonna have to check that out. I th- you remember, I you said that. You talked about that game on a previous podcast, and I never looked into it. I should do that. So it's it's really good. If you can get it, and sold. You like story, yeah, definitely get it. Sold, yeah. rare. All right, uh, I I already love your game. Thank you, uh, but I'm not not going to talk about it just yet because it's funny that you mentioned a uh, Grand Prix story because I actually a month ago sat looking at my phone between buying that and Pocket Academy, and I got Pocket Academy, which is same company, also mm-hmm. really really good. Because hmm. you, it's basically you have your own student, and then you build your school, and you hire your teachers, and you have your students, and you help your students develop by te- like giving them special classes or having them like walk around your campus and like you know, young romance or like join a sports team. Like there's all kinds of cool stuff. In so so they do everything that you can't do in school right now because you're busy playing yes. online. Yes. Okay. <laughs> okay. Exactly. All right. And football season's over. Otherwise, oh, and I'm one of the only two schools that didn't get a bowl game this year. So. Sorry, rare. That's okay. No, but um, <laughs> putting that aside, Pocket Academy is really good, and so is Grand. I'm going to get Grand Prix Story now. But um, my game that I have is uh, Final Fantasy Tactics: The War of the Lions for the iPhone, and it was like 15 bucks, but it's totally justified because that game kicks ass. I'm still waiting. I'm not sure if they brought it out on the iPad yet, but I've been waiting for them to uh, to do that because I that is I have I actually still own the PS1 version of that game. That is one of my favorite games. I I don't even like Final Fantasy other than the Tactics series, just to put it in perspective. But I right. I love this game. Like every waking moment at work where I was sitting there just, <laughs> doing, I would play Final Fantasy Tactics. That it's sounds really rough. fun. I want your job. Just yeah, I want your job, Amy. You left. What's my job? I'm an editor <laughs> for my. No, we football. we we want your job. Oh, all right. Well, I'm un- unemployed right now, so go for it. <laughs> I don't want your job anymore. Yeah, yeah, exactly. No, but uh, that game's really good. Final Fantasy Tactics: For the Lions. It is kind of steep for a phone game, so I could understand some people being a little bit apprehensive towards buying it, but. It's, it's it's a full game. It's a full game. Like, cinematics, which are so minor, they don't even matter. The game itself is just great. Yeah. It's Final Fantasy Tactics, and it's really, really good. So Very cool. Our next category is Best Console Game. Uh, yeah, let's get into it. We'll just continue with Rare. What was your console game of 2011? This 20, one's 20,000? 2011. Sorry about that. Weird for you, Rare. This <laughs> is strange. This is really strange, and I'll explain why. So, um, some people who know me know that I hate Call of Duty. I think it is the most cheap game to buy at full price because it's the same game. It's been remade like four times by Activision, and I have no respect for the game at all. But there is one game mode in Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3. It's called One in the Chamber. And it is the most fun game mode I have had in a console first-person shooter in probably seven years. Wow. And it's like GoldenEye 007 awesome. It's very simple. Everyone has one bullet and their knives. And every time you kill someone, you get one bullet. So oh. it's a total equalizer. I suck at Call of Duty. But I 
can be totally rocking at one in the chamber because everyone huh. only gets one bullet and your knife. So it all comes down to, st- to strategy. And as long as your friends aren't dicks and they, you know, screen peek at where you are on the map, it's a ton of fun to play. Like we, I went over there and we were going to do a movie night at my uh, friend's room. No, we just played one in the chamber for like six hours. <laughs> that, that, can, that actually great. sounds fun. I, I don't. Fun. Yeah, I don't even like Call of Duty, but I love One in the Chamber. I totally recommend it. It's so cool. much fun. That's Why cool. does this sound more and more like a porno the more you talk about it? I know, I know, I know. <laughs> 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 that was Vanna. Uh, <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> Vanna put stole. Vanna put Jason back on. I want to find out what his console game was. Uh, it's Arkham City. Yeah. Uh, Batman, yeah. I, beat I haven't, that I haven't, I haven't played it yet. Week. It is so good. Did you like Arkham Asylum? I haven't beat it yet. Did any of you like Arkham Asylum? I, I like it. It's the two I hours I played. Arkham Asylum and Arkham City. I'm right. Oh, you beat you. Arkham City, right? I have. I'm with you. It's awesome. Okay. Isn't it great? Yes. It's awesome. And there's, there's so, so much replayability to it. There, yeah, exactly. My favorite part of that game was there's the main storyline. You beat that, and it kicks you right out to after story, yeah. like an epilogue. And it's so natural the way it does it that mm. you're just yep. like, I, I want to keep – you feel like you have a sense of closure with that game, but you also feel like I want to keep playing this There's game. There's so much left I have to do to make Arkham yeah. City a better place for I am Batman. Exactly. Like, <laughs> no, that, that's literally how you feel because I, yep. I, won't, I won't spoil it at all, but there's basically like nine side quests, and I've only beaten two. I yeah. still have seven more, and th- these are like fully fleshed out, like yeah. big. I, th- I quests. think this game has probably the best pacing, of yeah, main story and side story of a game I've ever seen. I totally wow. agree, and I mean the like Arkham Asylum wasn't really hard. I feel like it was fun and it made you think. But Arkham City, some parts are like hard. Yeah, like there was a part with Mister Freeze. And it yes. wasn't even yes. fighting. Yes. Like, fighting I, I know exactly hard. what you're talking about. Fighting it was hard, but then there's a puzzle after a side quest involving Freeze, and I did not get this puzzle for like three yeah. hours. I yeah. was literally flying around Arkham City, swimming around, like going Bat Vision, trying to figure out how to solve this, and yeah. I finally got it. I was like, oh my god. That was so rewarding. Yes. Figured it out, yep. That I, game, know exa- I know exactly what you're talking about. I, I'm yeah. sure you do. <laughs> No, yeah. I, I, t- I totally believe you know exactly what I'm talking about. That game is great for PC or console. Awesome game. Yeah. I'm so jealous cool. of your excitement. This sounds awesome. It, it's I, really good. My backlog is growing here. This is why I hate podcasting, because I just want to keep on playing. Yeah, like the <laughs> DLC for Robin and um, Nightwing just came out, and they're like $7 a piece, I think, for PC. And I'm actually tempted to pick them up just because I am pretty sure if I get more story out of it, it's worth it. Yeah, right. it's cool. that much fun. All right. Well, uh, everybody else picked one game, <laughs> and I, I, I'm in agreement. Uh, it's Dark Souls. God, what a good console game. That was fantastic. It's, did, you fin- it, did you finish the game, Steve? No, 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 no. I Dean, got so wrapped up in other shit. Dean, did you finish the game? I've never even played Dark Souls. All oh, you dick. I, I love Demon's Souls, and so Dark Souls must be the 2011 console game of the year. There you go. Okay, well, that's, that's actually a fair assumption. That's because it's pretty much the same thing, but just better pretty, in certain yeah, ways. Because Dark Souls is pretty much Demon's Souls 2.0, yeah. where they just uh, kind of changed a few things. But what did you think, Steve? Just tell me, because I didn't even know that you played it. What? Really? What? You need to listen to the podcast more, brother. Yes. Yeah, I didn't. I, I didn't listen to the podcast for like the past, well, you know, entire school semester. I oh, yeah, about, why shouldn't you? Because, I, I mean, you've been on it for a long time, but whatever. I put about, I think, around 30 hours into it. Uh, a good, like, seven or eight of that was just grinding one day, though. So I'm at the, I can't remember what the name of the demon is, but uh, in the the depths. Yes. It's, there's a big monster in there, dragon, if you will. Uh, that's where I am Oh, yeah, at. the gaping dragon. Gaping dragon, there you go. That's where I'm at. I have not gotten past that. Uh, I have not okay. even attacked it yet, but I know that's so like you, my my next thing to do. So you spent um, kind of a lot of time kind of exploring and farming and. Yes, um, oh, but yeah, that, that game 
so amazing. It blew me away. Uh, the reason I played it was because I had I had had Demon Souls for a while, played it a little bit, and didn't really get into it. Decided right when, basically right when uh, Dark Souls came out, that I would crack it back open and try it. Kind of over a weekend, fell in love and decided that I wanted to get Dark Souls because it was the new hotness. Uh, and it became, since I usually go out of my way to find the best deals that I possibly can on games, I never pay the full $60 on games. Uh, it was the only game so far this year that I paid full price for. Mm, that's actually saying a lot for you. That was saying a lot. Yeah, that that's how much I enjoyed that game and the, how much I enjoyed Demon Souls that, went, that made me want to get Dark Souls and I like Dark Souls even more. Now, is I, it is it the is it mainly the combat that draws you in? Yes, I absolutely love the combat. Uh the world too. I mean, that's a beautiful game. Oh god, the world is I think if there was if we had like a most unique experience, that game would win hands yeah. down. Yeah, well, sure. yeah, it, it's almost like it's really hard to describe how even though the game forces you into a cycle of repetitiveness when you get killed and you have to go through the same yeah. monsters again and things like that. The, it's, it's, like, it's so unique every time you go through it. It's it's unique every time you go through it because the monsters will do something slightly different or you will do something slightly different and you'll right. die in completely unique ways that you never thought possible. Yeah. You know? The uh, the one web comic that I had seen that was like he's like oh cool the skeleton let me just go ahead and kill him and the skeleton stabs him in the face and goes no and then it's like you go back again and you're like okay I got him this time all right let's go yeah. let's go skeleton and then it, like five skeletons come from around a corner and all of them just is it's yeah. exactly how it is and it's like every time you jump into an area recklessly the game literally punishes you it just is like oh you want to be Rambo huh die. I, th- I think that's the game. When I look at my pile of games, I, w- I will not sell that game. Exactly. I Ever. want to yeah. go play it again. Yep. Next category is the best PC game of the year. Jason, yep. you don't have anything on there. Yeah, because uh, I can't Cause he decide. Couldn't keep, he couldn't keep putting Saints Row. <laughs> I know. <laughs> like, okay. That's he the can. The reason. I mean, it has to be Skyrim, right? No, I mean, it because... No, it doesn't have to be. No, it doesn't have to be you Skyrim. You could just say you love both. No, but, but he has to pick one. Okay, oh. then I pick Saints Row. There you go. Your I best... totally picked that. Your... Is there there you know, I do want... Okay, I know I'm wrong. No, what? No. no. Hey, hey, you know that W that Vanna gave you? Yeah. yeah. I think it's for you to give it back to the winner. <gasps> oh! <gasps> Ah, you bitch! <laughs> <laughs> okay, I pick Saints Row. There you go, your this favorite. All right, that. there you go. How well, do you feel? How do you feel? I feel really good. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. I'm glad. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, uh, the Dean yourself. Uh, my since. I won't talk about our next category because I don't want to have any spoilers. But exactly, my PC game of the year is Minecraft. It was released as version 1.0 on November. That's when it came out this year. Correct. Yeah, it's so, been playing it for like five years. <laughs> even though it's been in beta and alpha for a very long time, it actually was released in 2011 as 1.0 in November. So, yeah, um, yeah it still counts. I am actually going to choose that as my game of the year. My reasons are uh, just expansive sandbox gameplay either single player or co-op um in insane ways to play the game for instance i'm playing a map called kingdom of the sky it's an adventure map that is probably one of the coolest game experiences that i've had it's incredibly challenging but it's it's an adventure map where you're actually going around uh, an island that's linked by chains like all these islands linked by chains in the sky and sweet yeah, and this guy does voiceovers on YouTube. It has a complete storyline. Um, all these dungeons, all these crazy like puzzles and switches, and it's it's insane what you can do with this game. So you can either be creative or you can play an adventure, and hmm. just the flexibility itself makes it um, an incredible game. Of course, everybody knows what Minecraft is, so I won't drill it into the ground. But that's my that's what my PC game of the year would be. You know, awesome. if I had pl- if I had played Minecraft at all this year, I probably would agree. Mm-hmm. Adventure maps yeah. are really fun. I've been playing yeah. them. 
some of them some of them are absolutely incredible survival maps and adventure maps some of the just it just some of the creativity that you see um from some of the authors is just it's unbelievable what they can do with such a basic you know a basic core game it's just it's insanity so anyway recommendation though everybody if you like adventure maps in minecraft go play kingdom of the sky it's insanely fucking brutal but it, it is a it is an amazing map and it really shows what you can do with minecraft it's the dark souls map of minecraft <laughs> it's pretty evil yeah no it's it's awful actually but it's fun as hell all right uh as for the rest of us uh rare john and myself uh seem to have all chose what is it rare skyrim Skyrim. Skyrim. Um, <laughs> yeah, nice. It's uh yeah, that game is pretty freaking substantial. Uh I I picked it as my PC game of the year because it kind of because of the most bang for your buck category and also because it kind of reminds me slightly as to why I play more games on the PC. It was. Mm-hmm. It, it's yep. just the the graphical fidelity and just the even though the control scheme as far as the interface goes was more made for a console, uh, it still works quite well with the uh, PC. But just the graphics fidelity and playing sitting and playing on the PC and having the ability to mod in the future and having all those tools, um, it just kind of reminds me that yeah, this is why I play PC games. Yeah, I, I've already put so many texture and graphical mods into my Skyrim that it's it, it's it's already so much more beautiful than the stock game that it's like like those Dragon Priest masks. Mm-hmm. I've got like super high res custom like things in there and it's like Oh god, this it's exactly why I play PC because single player RPGs like that, you can just create like if you don't love it the way it is, or if you would like to say add something, you can just find a mod that someone made and just okay. Cool, cool. There it is. Bam. Hell yeah. You know, it's just like that's exactly why I play PC over over PS3 and Xbox 360 when possible. Yep. Like Dark Souls, obviously PS3 only, so I had no choice. <laughs> mm-hmm. But worth it. Sweet. Um, rare. Do you have anything to add? Yeah, kind of. Um, I, I chose Skyrim as my favorite PC game of the year because I love the vanilla so much as it is that I can't <laughs> wait to mod it. <laughs> yeah. And, yeah. That, oh, that, and like, did you hear about them going integrating with Steamworks like yes, workshop? Yep. Yes. Oh god, that's so cool. I I yeah. Oh. I mean like this is big coming from me cuz I hate Oblivion. Oh, you and I are, love yes. this game. He like, did, but I, I would I would try to talk to him about Oblivion. And he's like, "Shut up. I hate Oblivion." No. I'd be like, like, "What? Complete 180." I went from hating the Elder Scrolls to being a total fanboy with Skyrim. Okay. I think a lot of people did. That's yeah. all that need be said. I mean, but, but but you're right, you, Kendall. Wh- wh- why did that happen to you? <laughs> Honestly, uh, yeah. the main story, I I know the main story doesn't matter in Oblivion and it shouldn't matter cuz all the side stuff is a lot of fun. But I just couldn't get over how bad it was. And, and I didn't like the Oblivion setting or going into the portals and closing. It just it just didn't work for me at all. Yeah. I mean, Whereas, that was like, pretty bad. With Skyrim, it's just like, I can do whatever the hell I want. And every now and then, oh my fuck, there's a dragon. Epic battle, let's go. And it doesn't get old. Yeah, and I, I just have to add on to Kendall, though. Like, the Oblivion's not a bad game, but compared to Skyrim, it's peanuts like it's yeah. i would it's, hope so it's simplistic <laughs> it's simplistic the graphics aren't as good the 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 world doesn't feel as cohesive and alive as it does in skyrim and and i can see where you would have oh oblivion sucks and then going to skyrim and being like oh my god like it just it makes sense and so i, I, I feel like rare that if you had gotten into the elder scrolls back like before oblivion when morrowind was newish yeah. Yeah. then you would be an Elder Scrolls fan originally, and then you would have played Oblivion and be like, "Ah, oh, what'd you do? And yeah, then Skyrim... because it's not a graphics thing, it's yeah. just the way the world ties together. Mm-hmm. And, and now he, he, he gets that it's more... Yeah, in Skyrim it seems that the it's more of a natural world, and the dragons seems to be a, a big thing that... I, I feel just... a part of it. Yeah. Whereas with Oblivion, I felt totally disconnected. Really? I yeah, I just I couldn't get into it. I get like, that. 
I loved Oblivion. They, I loved it hard. They knocked it out of the park with this one. Straight they up. Really yeah. they, they really did. They really, really did. And that's why. Yeah, because like I, I came in on Morrowind and hated it. I came in. Really? To, you hated Morrowind? Yeah, oh, I couldn't sorry. stand it. I'm so sorry. Oh, uh, God. I couldn't stand it and then uh, played oh, no, Oblivion. Wait, see, see, Steve played Morrowind wrong, uh, Dean. He didn't play it wrong. He didn't like it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I, I I didn't try to play it in third person or anything. So, um, <laughs> that's the best I, way. <laughs> I I enjoy Skyrim third person. I I mix it up. But anyways, so it's getting off subject. Uh, didn't like didn't like Morrowind. I kind of saw why people liked Oblivion, but I didn't get into it myself. But I think they just took enough of the jank out of the game and just i don't know they did so much with skyrim that like no other game has done um i think it was even qu- like cliff blazinski there was some talk on another podcast that cliff blazinski the creator or the person over at epic creator of like gears of war uh had even said about skyrim is like how in the hell did they do this with on one disc it's like yeah. how how in the f did they do this 6 gigs of what Actually, the fuck that's true. Like, I didn't even think about that. They did it on one disc. Yeah. They did huh. it on less than one disc. Yeah. Like, how in the fuck did they do that? So and other games, other games, they do it on, like, multiple, multiple discs. Yeah. No, it's, they didn't. It's amazing. They, they've always done it on Morrowind was one CD, Oblivion was uh, four gigs, and six gigs for Skyrim. It's just crazy what they do. Yeah. Anyway. It's yeah. crazy. Just but anyways. We uh, should move on to the uh, next award, though. It's pretty important. It's yeah, it is actually. It is kind of, uh, yeah. Star of the show. Star of the show. Here we go. Best Skyrim of the year. And uh, I'm kind of continuing pretty much everything we just said. Yeah, it's Skyrim. Skyrim. Um, what do you think, Dean? And yeah, um, I'm gonna have to for this category. It was kind of hard, but I'm gonna have to go with Skyrim. All right. Uh, rare. I'm gonna have to go with uh, Fustroda. Still okay. Skyrim. All right, uh, John. Uh, it, it's really hard to explain, but Skyrim. All right, uh, Jason. What, what do you think? Exactly. Um, you guys know Saints Row. <laughs> <laughs> I knew he was gonna do that too. <laughs> it's funny because there's an outline. I I I really like Saints Row. <laughs> Saints Row the Third as best Skyrim of the year. I I, I know. Someone will try to kill me, but I have to vote for that. All right. <laughs> I, I I respect you for your decision. It's understandable. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, best. We have to move on to the next category then. Uh, for explanation, every every podcast. Oh, no, I shouldn't say every because there's going to be some people out there that don't. Just prove me wrong. But most publications, most po- podcasts, most websites you know they're going to give Game of the Year to Skyrim. We didn't really want to spend a lot of time... We've already spent a lot of time talking about Skyrim throughout the podcast. It's pretty much the Game of the Year. There's no question to that. Uh, yeah, we're not going to drum it up and make it a yeah, surprise. Right, and it's and it's not like our words really mean anything. Anyways, um, but we also have to have another category. Best non-Skyrim Game of the Year. So, kick it off. Uh, we'll kick it off with Dean. All right. So, uh, my best non Skyrim game of the year has got to be uh, Portal Two. Actually. Um, All right. Mm-hmm. So I, I'm so happy that we could select three different games of the year because it just makes me super happy. But um, Portal Two was it was one of those things. It was actually bought as a gift for me because um, I was waiting for it to come down in price, and I played that game and I actually beat it. I think over a weekend, and I was so incredibly impressed and kind of enamored with with the game and i was like this is it's it's absolutely something special it's it's much better than the first one and it's a a very unique and it's just a great puzzle game and then i played through the co-op and the co-op in portal 2 is phenomenal like it's some of the best co-op i think i've ever played in any game ever and it really it really just put it up there on the pedestal of games that I absolutely adore and love. And then they came out with free DLC, which gave even more co-op content. And it was 
even better than the co-op content that came with the actual core game itself. So I have to say Portal 2, um, phenomenal single player, phenomenal multiplayer, an absolutely wonderful game. And um, I will continue probably, I don't know, playing it on a yearly basis. It's awesome. definitely my best non-Skyrim game of the year. Well, awesome. And I am with Dean on that. Cool. What he said. Awesome. Uh, rare. Can I go last? Sure, you can. He is uh, a noob, after all. J- Jason, what is your non best? I probably. What's Vanna say? Does Vanna have one? Um, she's talking about this game, uh, Skyrim. Stop yeah. That. <laughs> as, <laughs> as her best non Skyrim game of yes. the year. Yeah. She, the what? best. Wow. Skyrim is uh, Saints Row. No wonder she was in your basement. Not Skyrim, yep. Hold on, hold on. Shut up. Shut up! <laughs> okay, no. Hold on. She's, no, she's writing Skyrim. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's her uh, best nine Skyrim game of the year. It's <laughs> right. Skyrim. Skyrim is yeah. her best non-Skyrim. Yes. Okay. I like Anyways. How about how about you, Jason? What's your best non what your favorite non Skyrim game of the year? Oh, Saints Row. <laughs> <laughs> and I have to agree that that yeah. game is phenomenal. So basically, Michael Bay. I, okay, basically, I am I am really ashamed at how much I like that game. Don't be. That game is amazing. I'm trying to think back of games like in the past years. Like that is one of the most memorable games I, that, you, it, that you will play. Jason, so. it, it, what, what's funny to me is that there are some games that make you feel like, yeah, I'm a gamer, and then there are some there are some games that make you feel like you're a child, like like you're experiencing world through a child's eyes. And like th- this is the this is the picture that you're painting for me of Saints Row that I'm gonna feel like a yeah. child who's never seen the world before when I play this. Yeah. It, it, it's it definitely is like a comfort food game. I, I it it has such. I mean, it it really hits all the marks. It, it's very funny, like just naturally, and it has it's like just to play it like control wise. It's really really good. So like your the driving mechanics are really good, and then just like watching the cinematics of it it's just hilarious and the way they delivered the lines it's really really good it is awesome mm-hmm. <laughs> I have nothing else to say about it it's just so it's so good um rare alright so um thank you for letting me go last uh yeah I actually like legitimately sat down and thought about this for a while like the, what is the best non-Skyrim game in the year and my answer, and this is so cheesy, is the year 2011 in total. Uh-huh. Like, just looking through my Steam list, I have played so many fantastic games, and we've only hit on a fraction of them throughout this entire multis, like, award ceremony. Like, <laughs> I can't name one. It's been that good of a year. I haven't even played Saints Row or Assassin's Creed yet. And it's yeah. still been that great of a year. Yeah, so I have yeah. I have The Witcher two sitting in my library unplayed. <laughs> yeah, same here. Oh, so same good. here. I totally do. Game. I I don't think honestly I can name one game because it's been such a great year for <laughs> yeah. gaming as a whole. I have that and I have Arkham City out there not played and I haven't picked up Uncharted three or Assassin's Creed Revelations yet. It's fucking <sighs> nuts. Uh, Steve, Steve, we st- you and I still have to finish Arkham Asylum to I know uh, play Arkham City. More it's than a crazy, to. crazy, I crazy year. I have played Dota two. I have Empire Total War sitting here uninstalled. Wait, 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 you have Dota two? It's not even out yet. The beta. I have it sitting yeah. here. It's yeah, me too. Good. Yeah, oh I, my I don't God. have time to play it because I have that many good games that I wow. need to play. It's been kinda a want, really kinda great wanna, I kind of want to punch you in the face right now. You know what? That's fair. That's fair. Because I have a really corny answer, and it's kind of breaking the rules by not it's, naming one. You know what? No, it's not corny rare. 2011 has been a fantastic year for games. Yeah. And it has that, been. That's it has my been. answer. What I'm, what I'm saying is, like, this, this, the same thing happened with, like, Old Republic beta, and now it's happening with Dota 2 beta. He's like, yeah, I have the Old Republic beta. Have you played it? No. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> I'm like, 
What? Uh, hey, 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 pass. Uh, call me oh, tomorrow, yeah. and I'll have the Diablo three beta, and I won't play that either. <sighs> <sighs> Ooh. But anyways, yeah. I had to th- get back at him from earlier in the podcast. Oh, okay. I countered Dick Punch. Snap. Yeah, but I have Dick Diablo punch. three beta, so nah. But yeah, that's my answer. 2011 as a whole. It's been a wonderful year. Uh, thank you, game developers. I know it's really cheesy, but this has been a kick-ass year for gaming. So It has. Yeah. I agree. And we have one more category. Mm. And I don't even know if I want to bring it up because it's just kind of, I don't know. It's, it's almost a, it's a little almost, mess. It's almost lethargic. It's it's kind of yeah. It's been a messy year for this category. It has. I think Jason at least wants to talk about his, or do you? I do like it. All right. Well, let's let at least let Jason go. But it's the MMO that you uh, the really best did. MMO that you played in the last twelve months. Um, real, just to get it out of the way. John and Rare. Of course. We know it's Eve. Okay. Wouldn't have yeah. been six months ago though. Mine was Rift. At the beginning of the year, I had high hopes for it, but it just didn't really work out for me. So, it's probably the best game, best MMO that I played in the last twelve months. But I'm not. It's eh, to me, uh, Dean. Sorry, what? <laughs> we're talking Dean, about we're talking about games. The what? We're talking about Dean, games. Talk about that one MMO you're really excited about. I sincerely apologize. Somebody just is in my house. Um, okay, so <laughs> do you know who it is? Do you, do you need help? <laughs> Vanna, get him! <laughs> yes, send for Vanna. <laughs> it is a good intruder. Um, Whoa! Not... <laughs> <Hot>. <laughs> Things are getting serious. All right. So my my MMO in the last twelve months. Yep. <laughs> Was that the question? Yes. Uh, ever. EverQuest 2, and I, I, I know I have talked about EQ2 quite often on the podcast. It just went free to play on December 6th. Um, honestly, it is my favorite MMO I have ever played. I will always go back to EQ2, and uh, it blows Rift out of the water. I actually would have conversations with people about Rift, and I would say, you know, Rift is great. It's really fun to be able to play three different archetypes and, um, you know, really mix up uh, your your class gameplay without rolling an alt. Well, um, with that, you lose a lot of complexity with crafting systems and different quest lines and just complexity mm-hmm. as a whole. And Everqu- EverQuest 2, I actually went back to after playing Rift and got a lot of that complexity back. And I'm like, you know what? This is a better game, period. Yeah. And so um, it's fantastic. EQ2, definitely my MMO of the year. I really liked Rift, but EQ2 takes the cake. And it's free to play now. Everybody, go play EQ2. You know what, Sweet. though? You know what, though, Dean? You bring up an excellent, excellent point about. <laughs> Losing complexity through flexibility. Yeah. Um, I mean, as awesome as Rift was at what it did, um, is the it's, fact it's is not was or probably. whatever that at what it does. Um, the the fact that it allows you to switch and do basically anything you want, anytime you want, as long as you're within your preset like main archetype: warrior, rogue, mage, healer. Um, you know the. Uh, the doing that kind of allowing that kind of flexibility really like you said you know if you find a cleric that cleric could be just any role in the team it's mm-hmm. not going to be mm-hmm. like that cleric is this thing or that yeah. thing you know and and, know. and maybe Rift will gain that complexity through you know being uh having years behind it like everquest 2 does where it was released in you know 2000 what was it 4 2006 so it's been out for a very long time and so maybe riff will develop that and, and maybe it's not a fair comparison um, right now yeah yeah maybe it's not a fair comparison right now but but still for me um with all of the changes that have been made to eq2 and the amount of support that they've thrown behind it and stuff like that it just it really makes it the mmo that i've spent the most time with in in uh 2011 cool yeah. Uh, Jason. Yeah. Um, I actually wise, have been seeing you play this lately, so what's up? I've been playing a lot of it. Uh, DC Universe Online. It's it's a really unique and interesting online game. I think that going free to play is probably the right price of that game. <laughs> yeah. But uh, it, it, I don't know. Liking DC comics universe Mm -hmm. and playing that game it's really a unique game combat wise it's not a traditional mmo it's more of an action game 
and the way that they're they seem to be now be doling out DLC and everything, it seems to be the right pricing model. Um, it's free to play. Try it. I don't know. I have a question, really quick, Jason. Yeah. Uh, can you use just the regular um, station points with that? Yes. Yes, you okay. can. So that like the triple points and whatever deals yep. that they have going on. Okay, cool. Because I have like a bajillion points from EQ2 yeah. that I just I believe okay. so. Yeah. Awesome. And the one thing I like about that game is you can it it really picks up the 360 controller plugging in. Mm-hmm. Seems to uh, I play that game controller wise seems to play a little bit better that way. It's like an action role playing game. I played it on PS3. I wasn't in incredibly impressed but i do have it downloaded for pc and have wanted to try it so that's good yeah, to hear I mean, it's it's not something i would ever devote solely Mm-mm. but it's 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 a nice thing and i like the story stuff and it has some really nice uh cinematic stuff like when you finish an instance so you know, actually uh, jason now that it's free to play I, I think I could probably get back into that game, but when it was a classic MMO pay to pay per month structure, mm-hmm. after being in the beta extensively and even actually going through that first free month, um, or that like that first few days where they let you play whatever. Anyway, uh, I just decided like I'm not going to buy this game because it's I, like I could never find myself enjoying it enough of the time to pay monthly for it. And now that right. it's free, I could go in and be like cool, let's just go do some random BS and I'm fine with it. Yeah. You know? Cool. You so can, I, yeah. think, well, I think... All that stuff that you, that you played during that trial, like, you can play for free right now. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, so. um, but yeah, that pretty much wraps up the 2011 awards. Well, gentlemen, no point in hanging around this dump any longer. Wait! Where are you going? I was going to make a spread. Show's over, folks. You can't go. All the players are going to die. Take off, eh? Thanks for listening to Multiplying, the companion podcast at Multiplying.net. Questions, comments, feedback, errors, etc. can be sent to Multiplying at gmail.com. We invite you to write a review on iTunes and visit our website at www.multiplying.net. We've made a lot of friends, shared a lot of laughs. Often at the expense of others. I think some people are going to be upset. Let me just close this conversation by saying you are one unique individual. Thank you and good night. Please tell me I'm not the only one drinking. No. You've heard me talk. I'm drinking. Define yes. drinking. You just said earlier that you weren't. No, I did not say I wasn't. He, no, drinking. he said he wasn't drunk. He said he was exactly intoxicated. And I, and I lied. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, this is. And with that, we should start the show. Wild card. What if we transferred power from the main deflector and created a subspace <laughs> to be on a mission? And then, do you think that might like putting soda in a bottle? <laughs> <laughs> Please tell me that was recorded right now. Yeah. I'm trying to remember the Mortal Kombat theme now. Mortal Kombat! Ho, oh, what did you just do? I felt that. Who, me? Yeah. Didn't do anything. <laughs> Wait, do, that... <laughs> do that again. Really unavailable. I don't think it's... Nah, that won't work. Shit. Have you been reading the wild card? <laughs> Do you guys mind taking just like a very short break? Yeah. Do it. It's real. We'll be back after it. a short intermission. Come on, <laughs> Give me about like. I'll go to the lobby. I was just going to say that. <laughs> hold on, hold on. I'll clean out my uh, keyboard. You should have Vanna do that. That bitch died. 